Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. World of Warships of course is no longer in beta testing, it went live yesterday. And uh, it has to be one of the most low-key major game releases I have ever seen. There was a brief note on the World of Warships webpage and that was pretty much it. They're doing an awful lot of community events however. Last night Quickly Baby hosted a World of Warships livestream. He was accompanied by a couple of the members of the World of Warships team and they were answering questions from the viewers on Twitch today. Pointy Head Jedi is running a World of Warships contest. Link in the video description if you want a chance of winning yourself some free stuff. Tomorrow night Circonflexes is doing a World of Warships livestream. I appear to have a cat in my room. <laughs> what do you want cat? Shut up. Um, and on Sunday, I am doing a World of Warships contest. Hold on a second while I get rid of this cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that was unexpected. Um, <laughs> oh, Rita's cats, man. Anyway, yeah, this is getting very unprofessional. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where were we? Oh yes, yes. Uh, stay tuned. I'm running a World of Warships contest, a replay contest, for a few days only, starting this Sunday. The video will be up on Sunday. In the meantime, in a lot of the World of Warships videos that I've been putting up lately, I have been making casual mention of doing over 80,000 damage with the guns alone in my Gremiashki class destroyer. I thought it was about time I put my money where my mouth was, and so today the day after World of Warships goes live, that's exactly what I'm showing you. This was one hell of a game in the premium tier 5 Soviet destroyer, the Gremyashi. I've done a review of this ship. I thought it was fantastic. I still think it's fantastic. In fact, I think it's even better than it was. Not that the ship itself has changed, but some of the other tier 5 ships have, and for the worse. And that leaves this thing just looking really, really, really good. And what I mean by that, well, specifically I'm referring to the Minakaze, everybody's favourite Imperial Japanese Navy Tier 5 Seal Clubbing Destroyer. It's had a couple of nerfs. Its detection range has gone up to 6.2 kilometres, and the range of its torpedoes has been nerfed. It no longer gets the upgraded torpedoes, just the stock torpedoes with the 7 kilometre range, although they are very, very fast torpedoes. The USS Nicholas, also a tier 5, well, American destroyer. Its torpedoes are terrible, even if it does have pretty good guns. Which now means that the Gremyashki, the tier 5 premium Soviet, has the longest range torpedoes of any destroyer at tier 5. 8 kilometers. The downside, of course, is that the Gremyashki is not a particularly subtle ship. There's my first kill. Very nice. The Gremyashki can be detected from a range of 8 kilometers. And back when I reviewed this ship, I said that, well, you're going to find yourself using the guns a lot more than the torpedoes, unless you can use American destroyer tactics and sneak up using the cover of islands and things like that. Well, this is the ocean map. There are no islands. And most people would agree that this very, very, well, boring map, because there's nothing on it, it's just open water, is probably the trickiest map in the game for destroyers to do well in. Because there is no concealment other than that which you provide yourself by your smoke generators in order for you to sneak up on the enemy ships. And when your destroyer can be detected from a range of 8 kilometers, that makes things very, very interesting indeed. But the Gremyashki does get these fantastic 130mm guns. They're larger caliber than the guns equipped on American destroyers. They're not as large as the caliber of guns equipped on your average Japanese destroyer. The one downside of these guns is their relatively slow turning speed. Now, it's not cripplingly slow as it is on some of the Japanese destroyers, but you don't want to be getting this thing into a close range knife fight, particularly with an American destroyer. When you're maneuvering to avoid return fire in this thing, you're going to have a really hard time keeping the turrets trained on the target. And so you tend to find yourself, due to the slow rotation speed of the turrets, staying at ranges in excess of 8 kilometers and just raining down high explosive death from above on your enemies. Because at these kind of ranges, the slow turret rotation speed of your guns really doesn't matter. And you're far enough away from anybody firing back at you that you can use the superb maneuverability of this ship to avoid incoming fire without having to turn too much, and therefore still be able to keep the guns trained on the target. So the two weaknesses of this ship, it's 8 kilometer detection range, which is practically cruiser standards, and the slow rotation speed of the turrets don't really end up being too much of an issue. 
providing you keep the ship more than eight kilometers away from your enemies, and you're only really close to less than eight kilometers when you're able to fire the torpedoes. And this is why I find myself hardly ever using the torpedoes on this ship, because in order to launch torpedoes and stand a chance of hitting anything, you have to close to within the detection range of your ship. American destroyer capitals will understand all too well what I'm talking about. And I've just taken a hit for the very first time because I closed to within torpedo range of that cruiser. And this is something that you need to bear in mind at all times when you're in this destroyer because it can be detected from a range of 8 kilometers and its torpedoes have a range of 8 kilometers. Any time you are close enough to an enemy ship to launch a torpedo at them, they are going to see you coming. And if they have any kind of sense, they're going to take the appropriate action. As this cruiser is quite ably demonstrating, he spotted me, took some shots at me. I was too close, because I'd closed to torpedo range. He actually scored some hits on me. It's the first time I've taken any damage in this game. Enemy destroyer, less than 8 kilometers away on his port beam. He immediately turned and avoided every single torpedo that I fired at him. My guns, however, are a little bit harder to avoid. And now, I'm at the perfect range. 10.3, 10.4 kilometers. Japanese destroyers dream of having guns that can fire this far. You'll notice that as my shots are landing on the target, the guns are reloaded and ready to go, which means I can very, very quickly and accurately adjust the fall of my shot. If the first salvo misses, the second salvo can be adjusted instantly and then hit the target. And I'm so far away from these guys that when I see them firing back at me, I have all the time in the world to manoeuvre and avoid their shots. And I don't have to make radical course changes the way that I would if I was closer to these guys. Which means that I don't have to worry about my turrets not being able to track the target because they do turn relatively slowly. These are the perfect kind of ranges that you want to be in in this destroyer when you're engaging enemy targets. The guns just never really seem to stop firing um, <laughs> throughout the course of this battle. That poor South Carolina over there is not having a very, very good day at all. He's attempting to return fire. There's a New York with him who's shooting at somebody else. Enemy cruiser just popped out of the smoke over there. South Carolina maneuvering hard, trying to avoid my fire, but he's strayed within my torpedo range. I just need to select the right target, not New York. There we go, the South Carolina. Fire the torpedoes off anyway because he's within range. And even if the torpedoes don't hit, and they're not going to hit because this guy's going to turn to avoid them, while he's turning to avoid them, he's dragging his turrets off target, so he's, uh, <laughs> he's not going to be able to return fire at me. I, of course, do not suffer from these kind of problems, so I'm able to keep up this withering high explosive barrage at this poor guy. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, well, doesn't this just demonstrate the fundamentally broken game mechanics of World of Warships? What chance does this battleship stand when he's being subjected to a barrage of high explosive fire and he's unable to return fire and strike back at his tormentors? Well, that's certainly one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it might be, what are the major threats to destroyers in World of Warships? Well, dive bombers, but I certainly haven't seen much activity from their aircraft carriers. Cruisers, and all of this team's cruisers, are hiding behind the battleships and, <laughs> and other destroyers. And we've sunk three of their four destroyers. So, oh, and there's the other one. This destroyer, by the way, is going to give you a perfect example of the sort of thing that I'm normally pointing at battleships for. Um, and it's not just torpedoes. Guns will kill you as well if you fail to adjust your course and speed. The second these guns start hitting... I will know that as long as this guy does not vary his course and speed, I can just keep clicking the button while holding the mouse in the same location and hit him over and over and over. And the guns are now on target. If this guy slows down, if this guy turns, he's going to live. I haven't knocked out his engine, I haven't knocked out his steering, he's still perfectly capable of controlling his ship. There's a certain grim inevitability to it all, isn't there? Oh, and there's a low health cruiser. I can finish him off as well. I've just sailed into somebody's smoke screen. I've knocked out his engine. Better shorten the shots. No, they mi and somebody else has taken him out. But the destroyer was a perfect example. Um, at the point where my shots started hitting, I knew that's it. I don't need to adjust my sight any further. If he keeps sailing in the same course and speed, he's a dead man. And he kept sailing on the same course and speed. It's not just battleships that do it. Well, I found myself dangerously close to an enemy cruiser. I think it's an Omaha. 
Omaha Phoenix doesn't really matter. They're both dangerous ships when you're in a destroyer. So, since I'm this close anyway, fire off the torpedoes. But he's turning. They're not going to hit him. Drop the smoke screen. Bring the guns to bear. And I'm sailing directly away from him. So there are multiple concentric layers of smoke between myself and him. So he's not going to see me even though I'm firing the guns. Although, as I bring the ship around to starboard... Uh, to turn beam on to him to get more and more of the guns firing at him that situation is going to change and I am going to get detected and then back into the smoke and detected and so on and so on he's heading towards his two surviving battleships back over there and of course the Omaha isn't the only one who can see me I'm about to take fire from one of those battleships at the rear but they're so far away that providing you keep pulling the camera back between shots and then zooming in again when you're ready to fire, there you go, shots incoming, and I'm already turning to avoid, and at this kind of range you don't really need to turn too much. Keeping the enemy at arm's length like this is the secret to success in Gromyashki. It's not that you can't get close in and sink somebody with a salvo of torpedoes the way that you do in an American destroyer, but you don't have to in the Gromyashki the way that you do in an American destroyer. Actually, you know, speaking of American destroyers, and this is another reason why I think, I genuinely believe that if you're going to spend money on anything in World of Warships, get yourself a Gremyashki. It is unquestionably, in my opinion at least, the best premium ship that you can spend money on in this game. Until very recently, I would have said that that accolade was shared by the USS Sims, the American Tier 7 destroyer. At long ranges like this, it behaves in exactly the same way. Very accurate, rapid firing, high explosive withering barrages of fire at ranges at which you're very very easily able to avoid return fire while the sims didn't have as good torpedoes as the gremiashki it was much much better at short range because its turrets only took something like seven and a half seconds to rotate 180 degrees which made it devastatingly dangerous in a close range knife fight it absolutely eats up other destroyers unfortunately the sims has been nerfed you can no longer do this in The Sims. Well, oh, well, he's dead. Okay, well, let's uh, start shooting this cruiser up then. You'll see that because I'm at the perfect range for shooting here, and, and what I mean by that, as I explained earlier, as these shots hit the targets, my guns are ready to fire again, so I can check to see whether or not these shots are landing accurately. If they're not, I can adjust instantly and get the second salvo on the way. Cruiser's turning, of course, which is going to make them significantly harder to hit. Oh, we scored a hit anyway. You can't do this in The Sims anymore. The velocity of the shells fired from The Sims' guns has been drastically nerfed. They seem to hang in the air forever. And at those kind of ranges, you have to pull the camera so far out to be able to actually see where the shots are landing and still see the target at the same time, at the maximum range of The Sims' guns, that you're almost not zoomed in at all, which, as you can imagine, makes it very, very difficult to actually hit a target with The Sims' guns at long range. The Sims is now, well, pretty much useless at long range. And don't forget, for a destroyer, long range is 11 kilometers. Um, <laughs> it's different to the long range in a cruiser or a battleship. Which means that the Sims now has to get to medium and short ranges in order to be reasonably effective. And when you get to medium and short ranges in a destroyer like this, it's a lot harder to avoid return fire. Okay, I'm within 8 kilometers, so I may as well fire my torpedoes at him. Uh, I'll vary the spread in case he tries to turn to avoid it. And here it comes, and oh, there we go. Firing the torpedo. Oh, Aiming the torpedoes it took my eye off the ball for long enough that I wasn't able to avoid that barrage of return fire. I, I took some nasty damage there, but it's all, well, yeah, I've still got plenty of health left. As long as I don't get hit again, this guy's clearly got my number and he switched to high explosive ammunition. So I really need to pay attention to the flashes of fire from his gun muzzles and react instantly because at these kind of ranges I just don't have the time. Start maneuvering. There you go, avoided it. In these kind of situations, you, you cannot afford to loiter around. Just wait for that extra fraction of a second for the guns to reload, or that extra fraction of a second for the turrets to turn around. The second you see the muzzle flash from their guns, you need to react and start turning the ship. It doesn't matter if it means that you have to wait another three seconds to return fire at him. If you get hit, you're going to die. And dead ships don't do any damage. And there's the last enemy ship. It's a Wyoming. 
I'm probably not going to get close enough. Maybe, maybe I can shoot down these fighter aircraft. No, no, that's it, he's dead. So, three kills in the Gremiashki. Soviet Tier 5 Premium Destroyer. 348,000 credits earned, 5,300 experience. Uh, I completed a mission there, so you're probably seeing a buff to the experience earned. 137 gun hits. Not one torpedo hit. This is not an unusual game in this ship. I very rarely actually hit anything with the torpedoes from this ship, because the second you're within torpedo range, they can see you. And yet, it just doesn't seem to matter. Because when you're in a destroyer that can do 80,000 damage with its guns and its guns alone, on a map where there is no concealment whatsoever, you know you're onto a winner. This ship was easily the best money I ever spent on World of Warships. Unfortunately for everybody watching this video, if you don't already own one, it's no longer on sale in the premium shop. But the second this thing goes on sale again, and I'm sure that at some point it will, um, particularly since I've just put a video up telling everybody how <laughs> telling everybody how good this ship is and you should buy it if it ever goes on sale again because Wargaming watch these videos as well they're going to be going, oh Jingles has just told everybody to buy the Grammy Hashley, quick, put it up on sale again uh, well you never know uh, <laughs> but if it does, trust your Uncle Jingles buy this ship play it, you will not regret it unless of course you just don't enjoy destroyer gameplay um, in which case, well, you can always wait for them to put the turpits on sale again. But it'll cost you a damn sight more coin than the Gremiashki. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.